Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Bat Property Solutions. My name is Hani Burhan. I'm Michael Abate. I'm Biniam Sagay. I f uh, feels like it's been a while since uh, we've done one of these videos. Um, summer, I hope you guys enjoyed your summer because we definitely have and we've been busy. Um, but now fall is here. Uh, temperature is getting a little chilly. A little chillier. Just a little bit. Um, so I hope you guys are enjoying this new fall season. Uh, Today we are coming to you from New Jersey and we want to talk to you guys about a topic uh, that happens to be one of our favorites um, in terms of invest investing strategies. Now in, in, in this day and age, the way we communicate, uh, we use a lot of acronyms, right? Such as uh, LOL, you know, TGIF, um, what the hell, no, not what the hell, WTH, <laughs> um, and, and, and things of those sort. And in, in real estate, we do the same thing as well. And we have, in our past videos, used them, such as ARV, um, ROI, LTV, and so on. Mm -hmm. But one of the acronyms that um, uh, we want to talk about today is BRRRR, um, or four, yeah, four R's, or uh, BRRR. Burr. <laughs> it's uh, BRRR for the birds. Anyway, bad joke. Uh, the it was coined by a uh, by bigger pocket by bigger pockets. Um, Brandon Turner, um, he's the one who uh, made it popular. But what it stands for is buy, um, rehab, rent, refinance, and then repeat, right? And so the whole idea of this investment strategy is where um, you buy a property, you, re you rehab it, you rent it out, you know, refinance, and then repeat the process. Um, and that's how you would want to, uh, you would use this strategy to, you know, to build your um, real estate portfolio. But to go in more depth on, on these um, four or five letters, um, why, don't you, why don't you break it down? Yeah, so it's really, it's really a systematic way to continue to add to your portfolio. And in order to get it right, it's important to start right. So the buying part of this uh, system is where it all makes a difference. It's very hard or might not, not even be possible to fix something if you buy it at the wrong price. So find properties that need work um, or are in disrepair or are undervalued, uh, possibly in areas that are up and coming. Uh, these are the ones that are really useful and great to, to, to keep your eye on. Uh, if you get those, that you're trying to get them in a sweet spot, which is about 70 to 75% of the market value. The reason is you want to take you want to get this good price, then use the next bit amount to rehab it. And when you're rehabbing, you want to make it livable and you want to make it um, appropriate for the neighborhood you're in. You don't want to add too much value, which doesn't equate to, um, so you don't want to spend too much that doesn't equate to value. You want to really uh, find the right team, the right contractors who understand the neighborhood who, and you can update the property according to what maximizes its value for retail. That's the big package. Once you've rehabbed it, then you're ready for, for moving. Yeah. So once rehabs are done, you would essentially find t appropriate tenants that would fit that property. Uh, definitely look at our last past videos on how to go about screening tenants or how, or how to acquire how good do you find properties. Yeah, yeah, find properties and also finding tenants and placing them and screening them and all that good stuff. And the reason is that because you want to start cash flowing at that point. Um, so that you generate income. Uh, the reason for this is because banks, when you're ready to do the last uh, or the next last step, which is the refinance step, they will be looking for uh, a seasoning period, which basically means are is a, is the is the asset stable? Has it been generating uh, sufficient money, or is it generating money? Uh, that way, they feel confident in lending on that property. And once you do that, you refinance, pull the money out, and you repeat. Rinse and repeat, baby. Um... Yeah, I mean, um, the idea is to, you know, once you pull that money out and then use that money to buy, to buy, to buy another property. I, um, just to illustrate this a little bit more, um, I'm going to do a few numbers just to give you guys an example, um, an idea on, um, on how the numbers work. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to simplify this because there are other, um, other costs, closing costs and stuff like that we, you would have to consider, but I'm not going to include it in this calculation. So just as an example, let's say... Let's say the property, you bought the property for um, $100,000, right? Number. 
in my market. Not in my market. Not in my market, but okay. But just for for educational purposes. For education. So a hundred thousand dollars, right? Now we said bank banks uh, loan um, you up to seventy five uh, up to seventy five percent. Or no, no down payment down, down payment would be twenty five percent. So that would be twenty five K twenty five thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So your loan amount would be seventy five thousand dollars. I hope you guys can see this. Looks good. Yeah? Yeah. All right, so loan amount, $75,000. Now, let's assume your rehab cost would be um, $20,000. $20, so now your all-in cost would be about $45,000. So yeah, all-in cost, all-in will be forty-five. dollars thousand dollars that's the twenty five thousand dollars plus the twenty thousand dollars your down payment and your rehab you know forty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars so when you're buying the property that's the number assuming you saved up that amount of money right forty five thousand dollars however you got that money and always make sure to have that and a little bit more because yeah, you know agencies yeah, and rehabs, you, never know, you what, never know what could show up so right. these yeah. are just these are just simplified calculations to give you an idea though so now once once you've rehabbed the property um, you rehabbed it, you, uh, you put tenants in, um, you know, six months later or a year later, um, the property got appraised for, let's say, $160,000, right? So the new value of the property is $160,000. So $160,000. Or actually, let's call it another acronym, ARV. After repair value. After repair value. A R V $160,000, right? So now when you're refinancing, because when banks, banks like to loan up to 75% of the, uh, of the uh, value of the property. So 75% of 160 would be, so if you multiply this by 75%, it will equal to $120,000, right? So now you've pulled out $120,000 from the property. You use that $120,000 to pay off your loan amount, which is $75,000. So minus $75,000, that will equal to $45,000. Now you have $45,000 cash. Um, which is the same amount of money you needed when you first bought the property to, to buy and rehab. Uh, but this time around, you have $45,000 and then you have a property that's income producing, which you're collecting rent, right? Ching, ching. So you pretty much got what you put in, you, you, yeah, but you, you got, also have the property. But you have a property. Yeah, so an now, income generating property. So now what you do is you take that $45,000 and you repeat the process. Exactly. Over and over. And over and over again. And time. at the in the buying stage, if you get it at an even better price, then you can make even more on the yeah. after repair value, and you can pull out more. So, yeah. buying is key at that yeah. that stage. If you get it at a good Bu price, it can buy, make a yeah. huge difference. Buying, you're right, exactly. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I hope I hope this helps you understand the the strategy the process you. a little bit more. Uh, if you do have more questions, please do reach out to us. We'll be happy to talk to you guys about it. Um, but in, in the meantime, meantime, please like our like page, it, share subscribe, it. share, comment, all that good stuff on our Facebook, YouTube page. We appreciate the support and we'll come to you soon. Soon. But uh, in the meantime, have a good weekend. See you guys we'll soon. See you guys soon. And uh, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.